Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and you like film photography and vintage film cameras, please think about hitting that subscribe button and the thumbs up for this video. Um, today I'm going to talk about the Ricoh 500G, which I think is a very underappreciated compact rangefinder camera, and I think you guys might like it, so stick around. So in my last video, I demonstrated how to replace the light seals in the Ricoh 500G and um, the response was really good. I, it always makes me really happy when I get messages from you guys saying that um, I was able to help you now be able to use the camera that you got from your dad or from a relative or just um, that I've been able to help you start shooting film again. That always makes me happy so thank you guys for all the messages, I really appreciate it. But um, now that I've spent a lot of time with this camera, I've had it for quite a while, but only recently since changing the light seals did I get to finally really, really shoot with it. So I wanted to give you guys my notes on my experience with it and give you some of the specs and see if it's something that you guys might be interested in picking up yourself. I do think, like I said in the intro, that it is a overlooked camera. Um, I was actually very surprised with the results and I'll share some of my results with you guys so that you can see for yourself, but let's get to it. So the Ricoh 500G was made in 1972 as part of Ricoh's compact camera series. You may know it also as the rebranded Sears 35RF. So it's a simple camera, but it does offer a lot, especially for a rangefinder under 100 bucks. You kind of can't beat that. So it has shutter speeds of uh, 1 8th of a second up to 1 500th of a second. The ISO only goes up to 800, so that might be a problem for you if you tend to push film a lot or if you shoot indoors a lot. Um, I do shoot indoors a lot and it actually hasn't been that much of a problem for me. Um, the only time it was a problem was when I wanted to shoot Ilford Delta 3200 speed film and obviously I couldn't use the meter with it, but that, that's not that often. So um, the aperture opens up to 2.8 and the good thing about this camera that I really like is it has an auto setting so it can be set to shutter priority. So if you put the aperture on A for auto, it will choose the aperture for you as you choose your shutter speed. And everything is located on the lens barrel for easy access when you're shooting. So you can change the shutter, you can focus the lens, and you can change the aperture. And you can see it all inside the viewfinder with the meter. On the right side of the viewfinder is a match needle um, meter. And I really like that because that's easy and quick when you're shooting, say, from the car like I do. And the meter is located on the front of the camera. It's a CDS meter. It uses one uh, LR44 button cell battery down here, which is very easy to find on Amazon. And I've had the same battery in here since I got this camera a couple years ago. But like I said, I didn't start really using it until now. So, um, it, but it has lasted me a very long time. A tip for you, if you have a camera that um, relies on batteries, set it to bulb mode. Um, I don't know how about other cameras if this works, but set it to bulb mode and your meter won't be on, and that way when it's sitting on the shelf, the batteries won't run out. So there's a little tip. It has a 40 millimeter Reconon lens, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, like I said, f2.8, and inside the lens is the ISO, so you turn this inner this inner part of the lens and that changes the ISO for you. And that's about it. Those are the settings and it's really simple. It has everything you need on it, plus, uh, you know, shutter priority, which I really like that feature. And it's really small. <laughs> so that's like, for me, that's the biggest plus. This is small, it's rugged, unlike my Leica. My Leica M2 is not rugged. I'm always worried it's gonna get broken in my bag. Because, because you can shoot so quickly with it and it has the uh, automated aperture setting on it, I think it would make a great street photography camera. And like I mentioned before, if you've been following me, you might know already that I like to shoot uh, from the car, 
especially when going to doctor's appointments or things that give me anxiety and having the camera with me and distracting myself on the way um, has really, really been a big help for me. Um, so I take a lot of my pictures from the car. If you picked up my zine, um, I have two zines that are for sale. Um, I'll leave the link in the description if you're interested. But um, they're called Riding in Cars with Film and uh, so I take a lot of pictures from the car. And recently I took it with me to a couple doctor's appointments and these are the photos. I shot them on Fuji Superior uh, 400 and also Lomo Color Negative 800. Those are my favorite go-to films right now. Um, the high speeds are, I found are work well from the car because I'm obviously going fast and I need a fast film for that. I've tried lower speed films like uh, Kodak Gold 200 or Ilford Delta 100 and those films just didn't do well from the car. Um, so these are my two go-to films and I found that the lens is actually a really nice lens. It's sharp and it actually adds some contrast to your photos. And I've genuinely enjoyed this camera. I've found that I more than often than not have been grabbing this camera before I go somewhere. So the only negative I've had with this camera is, for me personally, my camera is missing the rewind knob on here, so I have to use a coin to rewind my film. And a couple times I didn't have a coin with me, so when I went to rewind the film in the car, to because I needed to quickly load another roll, and, or I would go to rewind the film and then uh, accidentally let go and it would fly back which would cause the film to the perforations on the film to get stuck back on the teeth you know because when you when you're rewinding the film you press the button under here to release it from the teeth inside of the spool the take-up spool so it would get caught back on there and then when I would go to rewind it again it would get caught and rip my film off so I've lost quite a few rolls now, I think three or four rolls of film cut in half trying to get them out of, the, out of there. Um, if I could just find a replacement, the camera would be perfect, uh, the meter works perfectly fine, and everything else is perfectly fine, but I just, that one thing has been so frustrating and it's been the only reason that sometimes I take my Leica with me instead of this camera. So if you know where I could get a replacement knob for this, uh, let me know in the comments. But other than that, I mean, that's just a personal issue that I'm having with my copy of the camera. So other than that, I really can't think of any other negatives. But yeah, I mean, give it a try. It's a hun under a hundred bucks on eBay right now. So I'll leave a link down below if you want to buy one. Um, this is the black version. I think these are a little bit harder to find. Um, my Uncle Barney got me this one. He found it uh, probably at a flea market. I'm not sure. Hey Uncle B if you're watching this, but um, he sent it in a box of cameras I think a year ago and ever since it was it's actually been the, my favorite camera that he sent me So uh, thanks about for that Uncle B. But that's about it for this review If you like this video, let me know in the comments and please hit that thumbs up I started this channel two years ago this month was the anniversary of the second year and um, it's been kind of a crazy journey for me because I started it for health reasons and uh, kind of for loneliness, <laughs> out of loneliness, because I wanted to find people in the community to talk to. And uh, I've made a lot of friends and uh, all the messages you guys send me telling me that I've helped you or that, um, you know, asking me questions for help and stuff has really, really made me feel uh, like I'm a part of something and a part of a community and I hope that my website and this channel will be around for a long time even after me when you know keeping people uh, using film cameras and using film I hope that it goes on for a long time so um, thank you guys for subscribing people down there who comment all the time I remember you and I appreciate you and uh, I hope you guys will stick around. Again, if you're new, please hit that subscribe button. Until next time, stay motivated and keep shooting.